Germany is at the center of Europe, has always been at this division line between the East and the West, between nowadays NATO and Russia. And now it's, we see that this uh, whole regime to control nuclear arms seems to be crumbling. Is there a danger that there will be a new Cold War, that there will be a new arms race? Well, uh, I wouldn't go as far as to say that there is a new Cold War or, a, or an arms race. There are tensions. This is obvious for everybody. I think the, there is a recognition, there is a global recognition, there is, there, there is a need to look into these things. There is, uh, I would say, a sort of a transition from um, arms control structures that were built and created at the time of the Cold War. So that reflected certain strategic realities and, 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 and positionings of different blocs and countries. Uh, of course, uh, I suppose that as in any other area of uh, the world politics, uh, there has been an evolution. And arms control is not, of course, accept exempted. Uh, from that. So I suppose what we see is this transition. A transition is a time of, of course, uncertainty, but also opportunities. So do I s understand you correctly? You would support an attempt to make these uh, treaties multilateral rather than bilateral between the United States and Russia, for instance, to include China? Well, uh, as Director General of the IAEA, it wouldn't be correct for me to say what countries should do. All I can say is that um, the, the issue of nuclear weapons is a matter of global concern. And, and every country, especially uh, countries that have nuclear weapons, have to recognize that, all of them. At the moment, the whole world, in a sense, is waiting for the elections of the United States president. Do you think that the result of that election will have some effect on nuclear arms talks? Well, it is uh, undeniable that the politics and the course of uh, politics and policies in, in, in the United States have an influence on whatever we do here in Europe, in Germany, in international organizations. So it would be uh, hypocritical to say that there's nothing that's going to come uh, out of it. What matters, uh, I guess, and I think we are pretty sure about this is that would, whoever is the winner in the election, uh, the United States will continue to be a supporter, a strong supporter of the non-proliferation system, which is basically what my organization does. And uh, uh, I, I am sure that this is going to be the case. What about Iran? There too one gets the sense that there's a kind of hi hiatus at the moment, that there's a waiting period while the election in the United States takes place. Is there a chance that if Donald Trump loses the election, there will be a new impetus to dealing with Iran? Everybody is, is, is waiting uh, for, for the results of, uh, of that election. Um, there will be continuities and there will be changes. There will be th things that will be ad adapted even with the same administration or with a new one. Uh, but I think the JCPOA, uh, which is this agreement that uh, Germany has been so supportive of, and I was uh, having a very um, interesting exchange with uh, Foreign Minister Heiko Maas about it. I think all of this uh, will have to be looked at um, uh, judging the, the, these results. But it's not the only thing. I think there is a lot that the rest can do, and Iran, of course, as well, uh, to see to it that this process, JCPOA or no JCPOA, continues in a constructive way. What's the situation like on the ground uh, in Iran? I mean, your inspectors have been having some trouble there doing their work on the ground this year. Um, is the situation in danger of uh, getting out of control? Is it particularly dangerous at the moment? Well, let me say, regarding what happened this year, this year was a difficult year, I, I would admit it. Uh, there were some, some disagreements between Iran and the agency, but we were able to solve this. I think it was important, um, uh, in short, for those who may not, may not be aware, um, our inspectors were not allowed to visit a couple of sites which, were, which I consider to be very important. Um, so after long negotiations, we were able to solve this. And now we're back in business and we are working together uh, in, 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 in this process, which is a, um, you know, a continuous process that needs to uh, go on. 
So uh, we expect this uh, to be the case. Do you think there is a danger, an acute danger of things unraveling, as it were, in controlling Iran in the tensions in the region? Well, there are factors that I can control and factors that are above uh, my uh, responsibility and have to do with the uh, politics amongst nations. And this is not what the DG of the IEA can control. What I can tell you is that we have a technical mandate to inspect that there is no deviation of nuclear material to uh, the development of an atomic weapon. Um, and this I can do. This is something I can do. If given the means to do it, we are doing it now. We are collaborating uh, with Iran. But uh, as, as I just said, there are, from time to time, there are some uh, disagreements. We have to solve them. We have to continue. There's no other way. I'd like to turn to Germany now. Germany is, I think, the only country in the world that has decided to get out of nuclear energy completely. Do you think, what do you think about that, that decision? Well, it's, 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 a, it's a very important decision that this country took uh, a few years ago. And like you say, is the country that is moving on with it uh, seriously, without hesitation, at, uh, at, at great speed. Um, so uh, we are working together with Germany. The, the fact that Germany is leaving nuclear uh, energy generation doesn't mean that it's not going to be working with the IEA in the future. There are lots of things we do together in the area of nuclear safety, which is a big uh, concern for Germany because, like it or not, Germany is surrounded by a continent and a world where nuclear energy is, like it or not, growing. So that's a reality. And the only thing that I, I suppose we have to make sure is that whoever is in, is in this business does it at the highest possible level of safety. And I think in this, Germany has an enormous interest. You have also criticized the decision, I think, um, for climate change reasons. You're saying that, I, I believe no, no, that... I, I, I haven't, if I may, um, correct you, I haven't criticized the decision. What I'm saying, because each country is sovereign and there's no one size fit all in energy. What, what we are saying is that nuclear is, um, scientifically speaking, part of the solution. Uh, nuclear is a very extremely low um, carbon emitter. Uh, it's an energy that it's, it's, it's dispatchable, is there, uh, can um, work together with renewables. And the fact is that if you didn't have nuclear energy, imagine 100 reactors in the United States, all that you have in France, uh, everywhere, the CO2 emissions would skyrocket immediately. So it is a fact. We have to work together um, and, and find the solutions. As I have said, the goal is to decarbonize, not to denuclearize. Well, uh, decarbonize, denuclearize, obviously the critics in Germany would say uh, nuclear energy might not leave emissions, carbon emissions, but it leaves behind waste that Indeed. needs to be dealt with, and that is an equal problem. Indeed, it's a unique situation. But we do have the technology, we do have the means to deal with this. I'm not minimizing the fact that you need social acceptability. Yes. Nobody wants to be close to waste, to any waste. It stinks, you don't want to do it, you don't want to see it. Uh, it's normal. The, what the IEA can do is to make sure that technologies are developed to deal with this in a sustainable way. Um, there are different, different views, we respect them all. The important thing is to compare notes and to work together uh, in a future-oriented perspective. Mr. Grossi, thank you very much for talking to Deutsche Welle. For thank you, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure.